Now in computer programming, loops are kind of one of the fundamental things that we use. It's kind of the bread and butter of every uh, program. But there is an alternative to looping called recursion. So today I want to tell you all about recursion and I want to show you some example programs in Python. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So let's start off by talking about loops. They really are a fundamental thing that you use in writing computer programs. You might set a counter and you might loop around so many times until a condition is met when you finish uh, the loop, mainly because the counter has reached a certain number. For example, you might fetch some data from a database, you might get back 25 records, and so you loop around 25 times calling a function that will process those records, and then once you've done 25, you drop out and carry on doing whatever else the rest of the program uh, has to do. Now recursion is different. You still call a function, but you don't call that function 25 times from within a loop. What you do is that function calls itself 25 times. So a function will start, it will do something, and then it will call itself again, and then it will do something, and it will call itself again, and it keeps calling itself until an exit condition is met, at which point it starts to unravel, going all the way back up through all the different times it's called itself, and then finally exits out of the uh, program. I'm talking nonsense. Recursion isn't nonsense, hey? That's an example of recursion, when procedures fold back on themselves. So, in simplest terms, recursion is a function that calls itself and will keep calling itself until it meets an exit condition. So the next step is to look at some practical examples. In a moment we'll go over to a Raspberry Pi and we'll start typing in some Python programs that use recursion. But before that, I just want to say if you do enjoy the idea of writing computer programs, particularly if you want to write Android apps, then do go over to digitacademy.com because there I have a course which will teach you all the fundamentals of writing Android apps. Okay, let's go over to the terminal and write some Python programs. Okay, so here I am on a Raspberry Pi in a Linux terminal, and we're gonna start by writing a recursive program in Python. So we'll call this uh, recursion test.py. Okay, and it's very, very simple. What we do is we define a function, and we're gonna call this print uh, sequence down, and it takes a parameter, which we call x. And the first thing it does is just print x, so that should be fairly simple. And then the next thing it does is it says, uh, if x is equal to zero, then return. That's because every recursive function needs to have a way out and needs to have a condition that stops the recursion and starts the return back up to the stack. In this case, when x is equal to zero. Now the next step is to do the actual recursion itself. And to do that, we call print sequence down, but not with x, but with x minus one. So it will go get called again, but this time with a smaller value of x, and it will keep getting smaller until eventually x is equal to zero. And now in the main part of the program, we need to call print sequence down, and then let's just say three. So what that will do is it will call print sequence down here, with the word number three in it, it will print three. It will check if it's zero, it's not. So it will call print sequence down with what? Well, with X minus one, which is two. So it goes back in here, it will print out two. It will then call it again with one. And then it'll go back in here again and it will print one. And then it will call it again with zero. And then it will go back in here. When it's now zero, it prints out zero. And then it says, is it zero? Yes, well, in that case then, return. So it then returns to the one that called it with a zero, it then returns to the one that called it with a one, it then returns to the one that called it with a two, and then it returns to the one that called it with a three, and the program exits. So let's actually try and run that and see what happens. So we type python recursion test.py, and there we go, three, two, one, zero. So it's printed out those numbers using recursion. Okay, so let's try another program now. Let's try writing one about factorials. So we'll call it fact.py. And here what we do is we define a function called factorial. Now you know what a factorial is, don't you? That it is, so factorial five is five times four times three times two, and then times one, of course, gives you the, the same value. So what we say here is if x is equal to one, so that means we've come to the end, then you return one, because obviously one factorial is one. And then what we do here is we're gonna put in some print statements to help us know what's going on. So we're gonna say calling, and then, so this is gonna show us what the value of x is, calling uh, x, 
and then you'll see how this comes out times uh, factorial, which is the name of the function. I'm just printing it out here so that we get a really good idea of uh, exactly x minus one. So I'm just showing here, this is kind of like some debug information, and then I'm gonna put a bracket here. So that's just gonna print out what we're doing. But what we're actually gonna say is f is equal to x, well, of course, that's what we've passed in, times by, well, what's the factorial of five? Well, it's five times four, times three, times two, times one, and the factorial of four is four times three times. So in fact, what you can do is you can say, well, just work out whatever the factorial of x minus one is. Okay, so multiply x by whatever the factorial of x minus one is. And that, of course, will call this function again with one less lower number, exactly as we did a minute ago with that uh, printing thing. And then finally, at the end, once you've done that, we just say return f. Now we can optimize this and we will optimize this in a moment. Let's just add in a another line here after the call so that we have the same thing, but we say now returning. So we can see it winding back up the stack and we'll add, add here also at the end uh, what actually has come from uh, F. So we'll print out the string. This is just debug. You'll see how this debug appears uh, in a moment. Okay, so what happens now in this factorial function? It calls it. If it's the end, if it's the end condition, it just returns. Otherwise, it prints out this nice debug statement showing us what it's doing. It will call itself, but with x one less. And then on the way back up again, when this is returned, we can see what the value of f is here uh, in this also similar debug string. And that's it. Oh, sorry. So now what we need to do is just call it. So we call, uh, what we need to do is say print. If we want to know the result of this uh, factorial. And let's do five. So let's see what factorial five is. So let's save this and run it. And now let's see what happens, Python. Okay, so here we go. So what it says is this, is it's saying I'm calling five times whatever factorial four is. And then when it calls factorial four, it says I'm calling four times whatever factorial three is. And then it says, well, in that case, I'm gonna call three times whatever factorial two is. And then it says, I'm gonna call four, two times whatever factorial one is. And we know that one is our exit condition, so factorial one is one. And on the way back up, it now says returning. Well, it returns two because two times one is two. And then it returns six because three times two, this previous number here, is of course six, and then it returns 24 because four times six is 24. And then finally it says, well, I'm returning from five times whatever factorial four is. Well, factorial four is 24, we know that. And five times 24 is 120. So the actual last number that prints out is 120, which is from this very last print statement here. So there is the answer. And it gives us, if you wanted to make that a bit clearer, we could do something like this, print, uh, answer uh, and then plus and then the string value of that just so that you can see how it runs to answer 120. Now of course we can trim that down now to get rid of all of this um, debug statements we get rid of that we get rid of that and in fact here there's no point saying f is equal to and then return f we can actually just say return uh, x times factorial of x minus one. And that is a recursive function. Look how look how neat that is. Look how just lovely and neat that is. So you can say, I wanna know the factorial of five. It goes in that case, then the factorial of five is five times whatever the factorial of four is. And then it goes around again. It says, well, I wanna know the factorial of four. Well, it's four times whatever the factorial of three is. And it keeps doing that until it finally gets to one, where the answer then becomes one. And then on the way back up, it starts multiplying all those different results until it finally gives us the answer. So let's just run that one more time, 120 without all of the uh, different debugging in it. So there you go. A very neat way of showing you how to do recursion. Okay, so there you have it. Recursion is a function that calls itself and keeps calling itself until it meets an exit condition. Now there's one just quick thing to say about recursion compared to looping, and that is that every time you call that function, because you haven't exited the previous call of it, the computer has to keep all that information in memory. 
which means that unlike a loop, if you keep going round in recursion and recursion, you can actually use up all the memory in the computer and you get a runtime error because there's no more memory. And that's something that you don't normally get when you're running with inside of a loop. Because in a loop, you call the function, the function exits and all the memory that's used gets freed up. But when you use recursion, you call the function and then you call it again and you call it again and that memory isn't freed up until the whole unwind process starts. So it's just be careful to watch that. When you're using recursion, watch out for memory errors because there's too much recursion going on and there's not enough runtime memory available. Okay, my name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explained. You know what I'm gonna ask. Please like this video if you did enjoy it. Please share it on social media and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, I'll see you in the next one.